There are only a few things that are 100% certain in life. Death, taxes, and that every two years we'll get a new Mario & Sonic at the Olympic Games. And this year is no exception as Mario & Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games, coming just in time for the real-life games next year. Now on the surface, Mario & Sonic 2014 offers quite a lot to do, providing access to 10 different winter sports, some of which are subdivided further, making for 16 total. And you'll find pretty much all of the winter sports represented here, such as skiing, snowboarding, bobsledding, ice hockey, among others. Now being as this is a Mario & Sonic game, they're not exactly going for a realistic depiction of these sports, instead opting for a more arcade approach with simple controls. Take ski jumping for example, which has the aiming for visible wind currents in order to get speed boosts and increase your distance. Or skiing and snowboarding, where simple tilts of the controller is basically all it takes to make it to the goal. Yeah, they're not exactly aiming for real life here, which is a good thing because the game is at its best when it's being as out there as possible. And nothing showcases this better than the game's 9 additional dream events, which all take place in either Mario or Sonic's world, where all pretenses of realism go out the window. Such as with the Bullet Bill Sledge Race, where you're literally being pulled by a pair of Bullet Bills. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen that in the Olympics before, though I kind of wish it were a real thing now. Another dream event is the figure skating through a level from Super Mario 3D Land, complete with a Bowser encounter at the end. <laughs> Yep, it's absurd and awesome. The music is catchy and the attention to detail here is fantastic. In fact, the game's visuals in general are very pleasant to look at, and the character models look especially great in HD. So clearly there's a lot of variety here, and most of the activities are pretty enjoyable. Even curling, which is perhaps the deepest of the sports here, as it allows you to use the gamepad to actually plan your throw with a surprisingly in-depth interface. But here's the problem. With the notable exception of curling, most of the individual sports barely feel much more fleshed out than the Mario Party minigame. Even though I like that the controls are simple, they don't exactly offer a ton of depth once you grow used to them. And compounding this fact is that you'll only find a single track for most of the sports. So even if you love alpine skiing downhill, there's only so many times you can run the same course before it starts to grow a little dull. And this applies to pretty much every sport in the game, which is a real shame. I mean, I really did enjoy the snowboarding dream event, which has you racing downhill in a two-lap Mario Kart-like level. It actually reminded me of one of my favorite N64 multiplayer games, Snowboard Kids. But again, since that's the only level available here, it only takes a few plays to see everything it has to offer. Another dream event has you riding a curling puck in a golf-like game with two holes. And it's pretty fun, until you realize it's always the same two holes. The closest thing to an exception is a street hockey dream event, which offers up a comparatively remarkable three arenas, all of which are based on the Isle of Fino section from Mario Sunshine, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, in this case, the game's mechanics are so simplistic that even the additional arenas can't make the core gameplay interesting. By comparison, I actually found the hockey mode in Mario Sports Mix on the Wii to be a lot more enjoyable. And it's this unfortunate lack of depth that permeates the entire game. Even though there are 25 events in total, there's just very little reason to revisit most of them. Even the Legend Showdown mode, which is the closest thing this game has to a story mode, can be completed in just a couple hours. And you'll play practically every event the game has to offer in that time. And on top of all of this, the game's interface is surprisingly clunky, making you switch between the Wii Remote and Gamepad for all kinds of sports, with very little reason to, as proven by the game's multiplayer mode where everyone but player 1 is forced to use a Wii Remote instead of the Gamepad. Now speaking of which, I should mention that every one of the game's 25 events can be played with multiple people locally, and it does make most of them at least a little more enjoyable. And the game even supports online play too, but there's a catch. It's only available for 4 events, Freestyle Ski Cross, Snowboard Cross, Short Track, and Winter Sports Champion Racing. So basically, if you don't like racing, you're out of luck. And again, with only one track available for each of the modes, it probably won't be long before you tire of all these too. With that said, the online play works smoothly with minimal lag in my experience, although the interface is a little annoying, forcing you to regroup with your friends between events. Although it is almost worth it just to see your me piloting a cute little adorable plane. Overall, Mario & Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Games isn't a bad game. In fact, it's even a fun one. But it's almost too ambitious for its own good, offering too many sports with too little to do for most of them. Being confined to a single track for most of the sports is a complete bummer, particularly when the game's mechanics are already fairly shallow. So there is fun to be had here, but the limited replayability seriously limited the mileage I was able to get out of it. And even though the game is better when playing with friends, it's not that much better, which is why I'm giving both the single player and multiplayer modes 3 stars out of 5. Thanks for watching, make sure to stay tuned to GameExplained.com for more reviews and other things gaming too.